This week on Sail Away. We have had some really, really weird wind, and it is a very confused sea. Yeah, it is making me confused. Very confused. Yeah. We gotta be under a derelict boat. We might be. We might be. A week of crazy backward winds sends us in search of calmer anchorages, where hopefully I can get some recording work done. And we take advantage of some unusual sailing. We've been sailing around St. Thomas so much now that we know how weird this is. But as we take a moment to enjoy our new peaceful spot and settle in for a long work week. Yeah. A good passage. It's all just the final effort of a month worth of planning and work to get to the one place we thought we'd never get to go. But after two years of restrictions and closed borders, we're really going there. We uh, didn't hit a dock or a mega yacht. Yeah, Just cruising down between two of the biggest private mega yachts in the world. And it's the one destination with the most meaning for us. It's official. We crossed the line. We crossed the line. Back to where our Caribbean history first started, and we can't wait to show you. Mm -hmm. That was painful. <laughs> Ever wish you could escape normal life and experience more of the world? So meet me on that well, we did just that. We sold everything we owned on dry land and sailed away. Promise me that we'll sail away. Now we are roaming the planet in search of new adventures and sharing it with you every week. Just promise me that we'll sail away. So hit subscribe and escape normal with us. I'll be yours forevermore. Come on, it's just that little button down there. That's it. As sailors in the Caribbean, we've gotten pretty used to the trade winds. So when those trade winds turn completely around, it kind of messes with our whole world. Especially with a job like mine that requires complete quiet. All right, well, we are in Charlotte Amalie Harbor still. And we have had some really, really weird wind. So we are facing the wrong direction than what we normally are. And it is a very confused sea. Yeah, it's making me confused. very confused. Yeah. There's a huge weather system up in the Atlantic. It's like causing this big giant spiral. And so we're getting like the, as it's like going wherever it's going, we're getting like the outer bands and they're just sort of like sweeping up from the south. It's not strong, it's like the 12 knots. But yeah, it just makes everything crazy because all of the best anchorages here are best because they're set up perfectly for the trade winds. And so every place is just kind of sloppy mess, except the north side of St. John should be pretty sweet. So that's uh, our plan. We are going to St. John. We did all our laundry yesterday. We did all of our grocery shopping right now. And we are getting out of here. That's the plan for the day. Then Eric can work, hopefully. We don't really like being that close to the marina. Mega yacht. thing about this is with this wind direction we'll be able to go downwind to St. John which is crazy that never happens so we'll at least enjoy that part. Ready? Yeah. Are we gonna be under a derelict boat? We might be. We might be. We're just discussing if we think our anchor is under this boat. This uh swan that we have found out is quite an interesting story. It was sunk. They raised it back up. Somebody dragged it here. Now he's trying to sell it for a hundred thousand. Uh, so if you're in the market for a swan, uh, I probably wouldn't still wouldn't do that one. All right, trying to see if we can uh, weigh anchor out from under this guy. Not really sure what the plan is if we can't. As luck would have it, the wind shifted a little more west, giving us a lane. So we hustled. Top 
pretty good. Oh, we're right in exactly the right spot. I like it when we don't have to crash into a derelict boat to get our anchor out. It's a good day. While it's never fun to have to go hunting around for peaceful anchorages, which we often do, this time at least we were rewarded with an awesome sail and a unique one. Get it, Rivers. Yeah, so this is kind of crazy. We've been in the Virgin Islands and sailing around St. Thomas so much now that we know how weird this is. It just feels so, so strange to be sailing like we are going this direction. Because typically, this direction, you're just pounding into waves just to get up here and around the corner until you can turn up towards St. John. But with this south wind, like, it's just a beam reach either direction, back and forth. It's one of the nicest sails we've had in a long time. It's <laughs> super chill. Boat's cruising along nicely, even with a dirty bottom. Still doing like 5-2 pretty effortlessly. Set the sails a little bit ago, haven't touched them. No complaints, man. With the wind coming from south and west for quite a few days, that meant the protected anchorages would now be mostly in the north. And St. John's northern anchorages are some of the most beautiful we've found. It was the first time we'd ever gotten to sail the entire way from Charlotte Amalia to Francis Bay, and it made for a pretty epic day. I had a ton of work I was scrambling to get done. We'll talk more about why in a minute. And this was a great way to relieve some tension before buckling down. exactly why you always have to pay attention to the wind direction which anchorage you're in and which way is open to the water and which way the wind might be coming from it's just you know there's always a lot to think about but I think we made the good call yeah. a good passage good passage of sailing I know, you want to fish. The 
Okay, go for it. All right, go ahead and get the other side. Don't look up. Okay, it's a river's learning day. So we're gonna put a couple wraps on this so that you got a good grab on it. So grab it right here. And then we'll get it in a certain way, then we're gonna put that in. Alright, go ahead and start pulling. Start going easier once you get out past that first part. You got this. So the reason we'd been scrambling and working and trying to get everything we could done for the last three or four weeks was because finally after two years, a visit to the British Virgin Islands was finally going to be a reality. Why was this such a big deal to us? Well, eight years ago, we got married there while sailing on a boat. And obviously, nothing was ever the same. And while it was the one place we've most wanted to go on our own boat, continued extreme entry restrictions forced us to give up on the idea. But as of a couple months ago, the reports were in that it was now doable. And we were going. Bye bye, Alright. We uh, didn't hit a dock or a mega yacht. Yeah. That's a good start to the morning. We're uh, just, just cruising down between two of the biggest private mega yachts in the world. They can, they can buy and sell our yacht with their breakfast bill, probably. Walmart to the left and uh, Geffen Records, Records to the left, to the, to the right, whichever you, which way, where were you looking? Yeah. Port and starboard. That would be a Walmart family yacht right there. And that would be David Geffen's yacht. That's right. Geffen Records, 80s hair bands. I don't feel like they're doing as well as he is. When visiting the BVI with your own boat, one month is about the most you can get without a lot of extra expenses and a whole lot of red tape. Hence our scramble to get all of our work done before going so we could enjoy all of our time there. And why the scramble to go at this particular time? Well, as luck would have it, our good friends Brent and Charlotte were about to celebrate their anniversary there with a charter. And eight years ago, Brent got ordained online just to marry us. Starting to finally calm down. It was rough back there. All the way along the south coast of St. Thomas, it's always pretty rough, but today it's blown. 20 to 25 knots. So it was uh, quite a bumpy ride right on the nose. So we're just churning into it. And uh, now we're about to round the top northwest corner of St. John. You can see Tortona from here. Rivers is our scout. For the last two years, the closest we could get to the BVI was the north side of St. John. It was all right there. We could see it. But even crossing the imaginary nautical line between the two countries risked the impounding of your boat and a $20,000 fine.
official. We're cruising in the BBI. We crossed the line. We crossed the line. What line? The line to the BBI. and the BBI. There is no line. This is on the map. That's the line right there. A little dotted line. We're going there. Astro Town. Really good, good waves. And from you sees whiskers, you know he's a bandit that say Mr. Mark. Do you see land? Okay, good. Land ho! Do it count when we've never been out of sight of land? That is Road Town right there. We're about to make our turn in a little bit here. Finding a place to anchor is going to be the biggest challenge in the BBI. And I know we won't be able to sometimes. Because they've got mooring balls everywhere and you got to pay for them. You can anchor if you can find the spots that are free to anchor. We'll see. It is beautiful though. It's really cool seeing all the boats out. Everybody's sailing, everybody's having a great time. After all the horror stories during the time when the borders were closed, of the BVI Border Patrol boarding and even seizing boats just for dipping their bow in BVI waters, we felt pretty giddy just to be sailing on the other side of the channel between the USVI and the BVI. Mr. Ma, Mr. Ma. Already accepting the challenge of finding anchoring spots as opposed to mooring balls, we cruised all the way in to the peaceful inside anchorage at Roadtown, where we anchored in pretty close quarters with about three other boats. So far, so good. Now for all the hoops. Well, we made it to the testing part, and we got here just in time. Hmm? Hmm? These are easy, though. These are easy, it's just like, yeah. Rivers, how was it? Good. It was good? <laughs> You're fine? You're so brave. Yes. I was involuntarily going. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because we're all done. That was painful. That one was like the well, actually, that was the only one I've ever done. So it was like the worst one I've ever done. Yeah, no, Grenada was super easy. Antigua was super simple. We went to immigration twice. We went to customs twice. We went through a couple lines that I don't yeah, feel like were necessary. And, forth, back and, forth, back and, and then, uh, and then we just went to Port Authority. Oh wow, we're in. We're in. Cheers. Yeah, this is a culmination of uh, eight years of marriage. And somehow we wind up back where we were married on the day we were married. With not much planning for this to happen. We didn't think we were going to get here, so this is awesome.